What are you doing? A California man is allegedly caught sniffing women on camera inside a Barnes and Noble. Michaela Witter, a prominent social media influencer, joins us and explains what went down. Welcome to After Hours, presented by Law and Crime. I'm Sam Goldberg. So that was 28-year-old Michaela Witter, a business owner and TikToker with more than 75,000 followers. It was a Monday around 5 p.m. Witter decided to vlog an outing to a Burbank, California, Barnes & Noble. Once inside the bookstore, Witter is suddenly followed by repeat felon Khalees Crowder. In fact, records show Crowder has been booked at least nine times just within the last two years. Witter's phone then captures the moment Crowder crouches down and slides towards her. Witter then confronts the repeat felon. What are you doing? <laughs> Moments later, Khalees Crowder appears to do the same thing to another shopper. Crowder pleaded no contest to a case of peeping and prowling for a separate incident days prior and was later let go despite receiving a 60-day jail sentence. At the time of this recording, police say they are currently investigating the Barnes & Noble incident. So joining us now is Michaela Witter. Michaela is a business owner and a TikToker with more than 65,000 followers. Michaela, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, first off, awesome job confronting that guy. Thank you. Yeah, it was a very scary moment, especially seeing him so close to me. So I had no idea what he was doing that entire time. I just kind of felt him like lurking around. So seeing him directly under me, it was really scary and creepy. Yeah, he was super close to you the entire time. He never saw your phone and realized that you were filming the whole time? I guess not. I don't, I don't know, honestly. My phone was, it, I was filming on the back camera and I was filming on point five. So I was actually pretty close to the bookshelf where I was filming on. So yeah, I'm not sure if he was even looking or if I was just like blocking it the whole time. But I had started filming before he kind of even came around. So I don't think he ever realized that I was even filming or anything. Yeah, but you obviously sensed him in the moment and then saw what he was actually doing on camera. When I, yeah, because I had heard something that made me turn around. And that's when I saw him like below me, like crouched down very, very close to me. And that's when he was saying that he was, I asked him what he was doing. He said he was tying a shoe. And I just thought it was really weird that he was so close to me. So I walked away, looked at the footage, and that's when I saw what he was doing, like coming behind me and smelling me and also doing that to another girl. So that's when I went to the front to tell them that there was a creepy guy in the store. Were the people, the workers at Barnes & Noble receptive to you telling them that? I mean, I kind of didn't feel like she was. It almost felt like it kind of, they get those complaints a lot or something because I kind of felt dismissed almost. Um, and especially he was leaving at the moment. So she, there wasn't really anything she could do. And so she just said that she would tell the manager. But I went back the next day and it didn't sound like they heard anything about it. So yeah, I don't know if they took it seriously or not. But the next day I did talk with a manager who, like, I finally was able to send them the screenshots of the guy and he emailed me later saying that they would like let everyone know. So at, at that point, did you realize that he had previously spent eight years in jail for, for similar stuff? Um, I, th no, actually I didn't know at that. I didn't even know who he was at that point. The reason I went back was because after I posted the TikTok, there were multiple girls in my comments or who had messaged me saying that they recognized him. He did the same thing to them. Some girls said that he did the same thing to her that same day in Marshall's. And so a lot of people were encouraging me to go back to tell the store and to file a police report. So that's what I did. And we had no idea who he was until maybe like a day or two later when one of my followers emailed me with his mugshot, his name, his criminal history. That's the first time I had ever like even realized who he was. And I knew instantly that was him because he had like, his like little tattoo on his face and the ears and stuff. How many, how many different women have reached out to you since this happened saying something similar happened to them? Over 20 people, over 20 women. Wow. Yeah. At the time of this recording, 
he's been released from jail after being sentenced to 60 days because I believe you said the jail was too full or something. Like, how do you feel about mm -hmm. that? My heart dropped when I heard that. And I heard it from a reporter. I didn't even hear it from any police or anything. So I had to check myself because I just thought I had heard that he was sentenced for 60 days and I felt relief from that, even if it was just 60 days, you know, like I felt like, okay, maybe we're at least safe for a little bit. Um, but yeah, he, he was released after spending maybe three days in jail because they were too full. And I guess he qualified to be released because what he was doing was only like stuff that was considered misdemeanors or something like that. So yeah, I honestly am still pretty scared for myself and also the other girls. Um, just because, I mean, my face has been put out there, my name, people have sent my videos to his family members. I've seen someone send me a screenshot of people sending him my videos to his family members. So I know he knows who I am now. And so I'm just worried that he's going to do something worse to, to me or someone else. So I'm, I've just been really scared, honestly. I'm sorry to hear that. I think the good thing about going public with it is you're bringing awareness to it and a lot of eyeballs to it. And obviously people are on your side. Um, how long, how long do you think he should be sentenced for? I don't know. I, I think he needs to be put away somewhere, somewhere maybe that can help him stay out of society for a little bit because he needs help in some way or another or something. I'm not sure, but we just know that he, when he is released, he continues to do these things to these women, to these teenagers. So something needs to be done where he, you know, some kind of like rehabilitation or he just needs to be put away where where he can't do this to more people, you know? So I'm not sure what the correct sentencing is for that, but I just know that he's not fit for the community and society right now. What would you say you want the, the takeaway from all this to be? I think like it's brought a lot of things to light about like women's safety, even in public spaces, you know, a place where you think a bookstore that you're, you're okay. Um, but I think it's just like something else that we have to look out for when we're in public and, you know, we always have to keep our head on a swivel or whatever it is. Like, it's just, it sucks that our safety is always in question. And I just hope, like, I know a lot of parents are sending this to their, their teenage daughters just to make sure that they're aware of like something like this can happen to them. Cause it's not something I ever ever thought was something that people do, I guess. Um, so I'm just glad that people are aware that this is something that can happen and know his face, his name, so they can like look out for him. Um, and also just, I'm very grateful to the internet and TikTok for being so supportive. They're the ones who have like told me any information on this guy and have helped bring awareness to all of this and have been very just like supportive and just great to me for the most part, a lot of them have been getting some hate too, but, but they've been really great. So, you know, yeah, yeah. that's the internet for you. As long as you're getting a lot yeah. of support as you should be, you know, that's, that's a good takeaway. Uh, Michaela, yeah. thanks so much for coming on. And again, I I'm really sorry that this happened to you and that you have to go through this. Thank you. Thank you for talking.